May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In what has been a nightmare of a week for our nation, words from presiding Bishop Michael Curry's book, Crazy Christians, A Call to Follow Jesus, speaks to our place in these extraordinary times. Curry writes, being a Christian is not essentially about joining a church or being a nice person, but about following the footsteps of Jesus, taking his teaching seriously, letting his spirit take the lead in our lives and in so doing, helping to change the world from our nightmare into God's dream. Among the most disturbing images that have come from this week's nightmare that was the assault on the Capitol and lawful governance are those images that presumed to link Christianity with this act of insurrection and its tenor of white nationalism. Signs saying, Jesus saves to the glory of God were carried along with Confederate flags, American flags and Trump flags as if these messages promote a shared vision. And among the most hopeful responses have been words from faith leaders across the board, liberals, conservatives across the board who consistently condemned the assault, including one who called it a quote, unholy amalgamation of white supremacy and Christianity. The idea of an unholy amalgamation this confusion of what is and is not holy, what is and is not being Christian, points us to a pressing question. Are we losing the way? This way that points towards God's dreams. And if so, how is it to be found? Or as Bishop Curry has asked after this week's assaults on the Capitol, who shall we be? This is not a question about the direction of politics in the United States, whether it is losing its way. That is not our focus today. The question is, are we as Christians losing our way? And how do we find that way that helps in changing the world from our nightmare into God's dream? This question does not presume to speak to which God only knows, those qualities of our inner personal relationships we have with God. I'm talking about what it means to be individual, what it means individually and collectively to be Christian, to be the body of Christ revealed into the world. How do we get ourselves on this way, this way of being Christian? The answer to that question is the cornerstone of those practices of the way of, way of love about which Bishop Curry has been preaching and about which we at our savior began to engage last year during our Lenten series before the pandemic attack. Those basic practices in the way of love, of turning, of learning, praying, worshiping, blessing, going and resting this way for many begins at baptism and with our baptismal vows that we will be reaffirming today. Baptism starts and guides us along this way of love. Those eight questions of the baptismal covenant point to our core beliefs and values of our faith to which we pledge allegiance. We pledge allegiance to these with God's helping hands holding our hearts. 
discovering, journeying, following this way calls us on this day during these times to get back to those basics, to get back to the beginning. And that is where we are turning and returning on this first Sunday after the Epiphany. We began at the beginning, at Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This simple and familiar saying says so much about the way ahead. From the beginning, being a Christian is to say that God is the creator. God is the master of the universe. It is God, not humans, not economies, not nations. And this beginning as told in Genesis is not a scientific treatise on the creation of the cosmos. It is a theological one. Let us begin not afraid to profess this obvious truth. Seeking truth. Seeking truth is a basic tenet along the way of love, even if it is an elusive quest. If we don't start at least trying for truth by questioning assumptions, confessing falsehoods, and accepting the risk of speaking truth to power, the rest of the way will be misguided. What is or is not true seems much harder to come by these days. Truth finding calls for deep reading, critical thinking, and not just skimming the headlines of our lives. And some would say there is no truth. We all have our own truths. And who among us wouldn't rather hear those voices that sound more like our own voices, voices that agree with our private truths? Yes, that is true. Science even confirms this. But stopping at that conclusion has concerning consequences. In this truth quest, let us not be deceived by those voices or truth claims, which like noisy gongs and clanging cymbals, lack a whisper of love. For without love, they are nothing. This week, we have witnessed some hard truths. The truth that insurrection is not the same as civil disobedience that standards for blacks and whites in this country are still separate and not equal, that good people sometimes do bad things, and that we have been and remain a united and divided nation. Hard to bear, deep reading, truth telling is the beginning of healing of a nation, of relationships, and of ourselves. Truth-telling has been key to reconciliation following the atrocities of apartheid and genocide in African nations. Truth-telling is the first step of the 12 in recovery and healing. Truth-telling admits and confesses our powerlessness to certain forces, or as St. Paul confesses, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I do, want, but I do the very thing I hate. Jesus calls the sick to truth-telling. He asked the invalid at the pool to confront his own truth when he asked, do you want to be made well? It is truth that Jesus brings to light when he tells the woman at the well about her five husbands when she claims only to have one. And Jesus declares himself as the witness to the truth. He, his life, the incarnation has come into the world to testify to truth, as he tells King Herod. In truth, Jesus puts the nightmare of our world into an honest light as it is compared to God's dream for creation. God's dream that began from the vantage of dispelling chaos in favor of peace and order. Genesis tells that God does create in the midst of darkness, but not by the power of darkness and violence. God creates life by word and spirit, by ruah, the very breath of God. It is Jesus Christ who testifies to the truth. 
being Christians, as followers of Jesus, the best we can do is to seek to make the truth of Jesus, the truth of Jesus' teachings, our own truth. To love like that love and to hope in that hope fulfilled. We are living in difficult days. The pandemic, the isolation, real and immediate threats to our mental, physical, and spiritual healing are looming. What happened in Washington this week could be easily dismissed with time as another piece of political theater. But if we dare to seek the truth in it, it will reveal something so much more to us. The nightmares of our days are openings through which God creates something good and beautiful. Life created out of an empty void, order from chaos, resurrection from death. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. And this is where we begin. At the beginning. As infants and children of God. Who in baptism promise to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Take his teachings seriously. And let his spirit take the lead in our lives. All with the help and power of the one God who started it all. Amen.